welcome to the unit on introduction to the surface embellishment. In this unit you will understand the scope of surface embellishments in fashion and related products. This unit comprises of three modules and a final review section. By the end of this unit students will be able to define the term surface embellishments as used on innovative fashion products. Recognize the significance of surface embellishments on textiles as value additions. The list of categories of fashion and apparel products. Explain the scope of surface embellishments on fashion and apparel products. Classify the techniques of surface embellishments. This first module will introduce you to the world of surface embellishments. Fabric embellishments are decorations that are normally added to the fabrics to make them more beautiful because of the nature of decorative patterns which they create. Common material that can be used for this process include fringe, beads, buttons. In many ways embellishments is use the ultimate tool of decorator. It can be seen with some degree of accuracy as the heart and soul of the decorative world. To understand and accept embellishment is to understand the accept decoration. Picking up a Collins English dictionary, the easy definition of the word embellishment is to make something more attractive by adding decorations or to make a story more interesting by adding details which may not be true. Collins Tussos makes an addition to the word embellishment by adding decorate, enhance, add on, dress, grace, deck, trim, dress up, enrich, garnish, ornament, gild, bed deck, tart up and beautify. Surface embellishment is an important component of freedom. It's a great way of bringing your personality, your style, your skill to your work and putting your own stamp on your project. There are thousands of ways to embellish. The following are the few basics that I hope you will find helpful and encourage you to experiment. To make an addition to you or to enhance the sum of seems to be an integral part of human nature. We have always felt the need to embroider using the word in its loosest term whether that be through design or craft or indeed through fact or fiction. In this we are as on one species as no matter what culture or era we think of. We have all used decorations to enhance and embellish most elements of the artificial world that has been created. Textiles in particular have a long and full tradition of embellishment. In addition to fabric can take the form of nearly anything, form the addition of pure stitching to the other fabric, beads, metals, wood, glass, precious stones and animal products. Embellishment can also take many forms with pattern, work following the suggestions of nature, the geometrical, abstract, font and lettering. Whatever the technique or suggestions for composition, the end result is always nearly the same. To make something more than it was, to add decorations to enhance its attraction to individual. However, embellishment was by no means limited to textiles, ceramics, glass, metal, wood. In fact, all major and minor decorative arts used embellishments as a lawful tool in which to decorately enhance their results. It was also seen by successive generations as an integral addition to the skill based of the discipline rather than as a filler or by product of the main event. This relatively intense and symbiotic human attraction to the decorative is something that modernism on the whole failed to take into account. In many respects modernism saw one of its tasks as the declaring of war on the tradition of human nature and human decorative arts. Seeing decorations and pattern as the addition of irrelevant embellishment through dishonesty to the form and the function of the product. To be fair, this does have some merit. Embellishment can well be seen as a form of tarting up a mask or distraction of the practical purpose of product if you will. 
even to the point of the deflection of the truth. Even the second definition of the Collins English Dictionary stated above, although being an application towards fiction and storytelling does make the implication clear. As far as the latest a proportion of embellishment is concerned, adding details which may not be true. Having said that, was it strictly necessary to have a near iconoclastic campaign against the world of embellishment? Decoration and pattern? Probably not. A number of minimal modernist enthusiasts had frankly disturbing the idea as to where they stood in the time frame of the decorative arts compared to those who embellished. Many of those ideas and analogies bounded on cultural racism with traditional decoration being seen by many as belonging to the world of the non-sophisticated and the culturally backward. It is perhaps an unsavory aspect of some of the 20th century theories on design and decoration theories which are often stripped of their more continuous aspects by today's world. In many respects, the iconoclastic approach the modernist took to decoration had a mixed result at least on the level of the removal of pattern. The 20th century history of textiles pattern work is just as rich, if not more so, than the previous 19th century. We live in an environment where embellishment is often limited and contained, leaving much of our artificial world often with a stark and plain prospect. In some respect, is it any wonder than that graffiti, apart from the sanctioned graffiti of the advertising world, is often the only outward appearance of color, intensity, expression, and even this is forwarded on as a departure from the norm. In order, in other words, an at attack on the minimal by decorative. To define the term surface embellishments, as used on innovative fashion products, textiles, surface design is the art of changing the appearance of natural and synthetic surfaces by the application of traditional, stylized, digitized and illustrationary techniques to embellish a product. It is also the art of enhancing a textile surface structure by applying three-dimensional techniques such as weaving, knitting, embroidery, lace, beading and embossing. In sewing and craft, an embellishment is anything that add design interest to the piece. Designing the surface of the garment to make it more beautiful and attractive is known as surface ornamentation or embellishment. Surface embellishment is a method of value addition to the fabric. It increases the value of the garment, both by appearance and by its price. Now let's move to the recognize the significance of surface embellishments on textiles as value additions. In simple terms, one can define value addition as a means of enhancing the appearance and the value of the garment. As we all know, fashion is a cycle and trends keep changing. At present, people go for the highly ornamented garments. Not only for the wedding, they get into formals, party wear and so on. Ornamentation is not just adds value for the garment, but also increases its price to a higher extent. India has long been known for fabric decoration using traditional weaving, dyeing and embroidery. Indian embroidery has become synonymous with the traditional fabric ornamentation. Its origin dates back to ancient times. Embroidery has ornamented almost everything in fabrics from handkerchief to quills to wearable and home furnishings. Be it a simple running stitch of kanta or the satin or chain stitch of Kashmiri kashida to the intricate chicken curry of Lucknow inspired from the Mughal era. They all depict the passion and life of the craftsman of India. Embroidery is just one of the many value additions techniques used. Other techniques are applique works, 
printing, dyeing techniques, knitting, crochet, braiding, beadwork, lace and ribbon work and piping. Each of these methods have their own applications and value, which will be discussed in detail in this course. With a large variety of techniques, applications and materials enabling you to create unique textile surfaces with rich the exotic textures, gorgeous colored 3D manipulated forms, there is an array of new and innovative techniques that can be made with exploration and experimentation. Quick explorations with samples lead to the production of embellishment surfaces enhance with decoration, painting, beading, padding, stuffing, wiring, collaging, folding, gathering, wrapping, fraying, patchwork, laminating and stitching. Surface ornamentation helps you to translate the design inspiration into a special unique artwork of your own choice. It encompasses a mixture of techniques and applications. In this module, you will learn about the various techniques of surface embellishment. Design on a surface is completely open-ended. Classification for creatively that provides almost limitless opportunities for the artist expression. A form of art that is not delayed by preconceived ideas, stereotypes or classifications. Textures and media may be presented in the new and unexpected way. The name surface design includes not only fiber but other materials too. The name textile art or textile creation and design are too limited to be able to describe the possibilities. Today, soft sculptured cloth figures have become a recognizable art and craft form surrounding a wonderfully diverse range of textiles and art techniques. Examples of textiles and art techniques are portrait, caricature, characterization, fabric manipulation, quilting or needle sculpture, beading, embroidery, painting, dyeing and printing, knitting, weaving, crochet. Fashion or costume design and all sort of other textile assemblishments. Textile representations have been part of our social and cultural history for centuries. Few examples survive today due to the perishable nature of the materials used and certainly the overhandling of the item. Those that do exist provide insights into cultural fashion fabrics and the economy of the time which they are made. The creative power you process to transform a formless thought or vision into a fully formed expression and extension of yourself using only a yard of fabric and spool of thread is truly a creative gift and is achievable by anyone with a little knowledge, some patience and few basic skills. Embroidery till a decade ago was largely in the unorganized sector. 60% of the market is governed by the organized sector. Surat and Mumbai are the major embroidery centers in the country. Bareilly and Muridabad are known for beadwork. As the export market is getting more organized, more enterprises have started exporting embroidered articles. Leading company I in Mumbai have has a market in the large range of rupees 4000 to 1500 a meter for hand embroidered and rupees 50 to 100 a meter for machine embroideries. Our export are growing at the rate of 15 to 20 percentage per annum. Garments with sequins and crochet lace of Indian looks are well received by foreign customers and now such works are being done on sleepwear too. Sweekens and beadwork, tie and dye textiles do have a good market value. Common techniques of embellishments used on textiles as value addition are applique, embroidery done either by machine or hand, quilting, patchwork, trim, 
lays either pre-made or homemade piping made from either self fabric or contrast, fabric or simply a card, fringe, smoking, beads, sequence, printing and dyeing methods. Items that normally serve a particular function may also be used as embellishment. For example, button can be placed anywhere on the piece, zippers can be unzipped and be used as piping or simply stitched on. Sequins can be placed anywhere, buckles can be placed anywhere in the piece and apply. It is a small ornament or device applied to another surface. It is a surface pattern that is used to decorate an aspect of a garment or product. It is highly used with the textiles industry but lately is a key trend for market do meant items. It is highly used with the textile industry but lately is a key trend for make do meant items. In the context of sewing an applique refers to a needlework technique in which patterns or representational scenes are created by the attachment of small pieces of fabric to a larger pieces of contrasting color or texture. It is particularly suitable for work which is to be seen from a distance such as in banner making. Embroidery is a handcraft of decorating fabrics or other materials with needle and thread or yarn. Embroidery may also incorporate other materials such as metal strips, pearls, beads, quilts and sequins. An interesting characteristic of embroidery is that the basic technique or stitches on surviving examples of the earliest embroidery chain stitch, buttonhole or blanket stitch, running stitch, satin stitch and cross stitch remain the fundamental techniques of hand embroidery today. The development of machine embroidery on a mass production scale came about in stages. The earliest machine embroidery used a combination of machine looms and teams of women embroidering the textile by hand. India is a country which has a rich culture, tradition, art, music, literature and sculpture. Embroidery is no exception. Important examples of embroidery in India are Kanda, Kasuti, Fulkari, Chikankari, Kashida to name a few. Quilting is the process of using a needle and thread to join two or more layers of material to make a quilt. Typically quilting is done with three layers. The top fabric or quilt top, batting or insulating material and backing material. The quilter's hand or sewing machine passes the needle and thread through all three layers and then brings the needle back up. The process is repeated across the entire area where quilting is wanted. A running stitch is commonly used and these stitches can be purely functional or decorative and elaborate. Quilting is done to create bedspreads, art quilts, wall hangings, clothing and a variety of textile products. Quilting can make a project thick or with dense quilting can rise one area so that the other stands up. Patchwork or piecework is a form of needlework that involves sewing together pieces of fabric into a larger design. The large design is usually based on repeat patterns built up with different fabric shapes which can be different colors. These shapes are carefully measured and basic geometric shapes are cut making them easy to piece together. Patchwork is most often used to make quilts but it can also be used to make bags, wall hangings, warm jackets, cushion covers, skirts, waistcoats and other items of clothing. Some textile artists work with patchwork often combining it with embroidery. Lace is an open work fabric patterned with open holes in the work made by 
machine or by hand. The holes can be formed by removal of threads or cloth from a previously woven fabric but more often open spaces are created. As part of the lace fabric, lace making is an ancient craft. True lace is not made until the lace is created when a thread is looped, twisted or braided to the other threads independently from a backing fabric. Originally linen, silk, gold or silver threads were used. Now lace is often made with cotton thread although linen and silk threads are still available. Manufactured lace may be made of synthetic fiber. A few modern artists make lace with a fine copper or silver wire instead of thread. Piping. Piping is a type of trim or embellishment consisting of a strip of folded fabric inserted into a seam to define the edge or style lines of a garment or other textile objects usually the fabric strip is cut on the bias. It may be made from either or of leather. Today piping is common in upholstery and decorative pillows but it is also used on clothing. Piping pocket openings, garment edges and seams are characteristics of western wear. Fringe. Fringe is an ornamental textile trim applied to an edge of an item such as drapery, a flag, epaulets or decorative tassel. Fringe originates in the ends of the warp projecting beyond the woven fabric. In this way, a cut piece of fabric would not require hemming in order to achieve an edge, which would not unravel. Several strands of weft threads would be removed and the warp threads would remain. More commonly, it is made separately and sewn on consisting sometimes of projecting ends, twisted or plaited together and sometimes of loose threads of wool, silk, linen and narrow strips of leather. Smocking Smocking is an embroidery technique used to gather fabric so that it can stretch. Before elastic, smocking was commonly used in cuffs, bodice and necklines in garments where buttons were undesirable. Smoking developed in England and has been practiced since the Middle Ages and is unusual among embroidery methods in that it was often worn by labors. Other major embroidery styles are purely decorative and represent status symbols. Smoking was practical for garments and flexible, hence its name derives from smoke, a farmer's work shirt. Smoking may be done in many sophisticated patterns. Standard hand smoking stitches are cable stitch, stem stitch, outline stitch, cable florete, wave stitch, honeycomb stitch, surface honeycomb stitch, trellis stitch, van de key stitch, bullion stitch and smoker's knot. Cable stitch. Cable stitch is a tight stitch of double rows of join altering alternating columns of gathers. Stem stitch. Stem stitch is a tight stitch with minimum flexibility that joins two columns of gathers at a time in single overlapping rows with a downward slope. Outline stitch. Outline stitch is similar to the stem stitch but with a upward slope. Cable flowerette. Cable flowerette is a set of gathers worked in three rows of stitches across four columns of gathers. These are often organized in diagonally. Arrange sets of flowerets for loose smoking. Wear stitch. Wear stitch is a medium density pattern that alternatively employs tight horizontal stitches and loose diagonal stitches. Honeycomb stitch. Honeycomb stitch is a medium density variant on the cable stitch that double stitches each set of gathers and 
provide more spacing between them with an interweaving diagonal stitch concealed on the reverse side of the fabric. Surface honeycomb stitch is surface honeycomb stitch is tight variant on the honeycomb stitch and the wave stitch with a diagonal stitch visible, but spanning only one gather instead of a gather and a space. Trellis stitch. Trellis stitch is a medium density pattern that uses stem stitches and outline stitches to from diamond shape patterns. Van Dyke stitch. Van Dyke stitch is a tight variant on the surface honeycomb stitch that wraps diagonal stitches in the opposite direction. Boolean stitch. Boolean stitch is a complex knotted stitch that joins several gathers in single stitch. It is organized similarly to cable flowerets. Smoker's knot. Smoker's knot is a simple knotted stitch used to finish work with a thread of, or for decorative purposes. Let us now move on to the dyeing and printing techniques. Tie dye. Tie dye is a modern term coined in the ancient resist dyeing techniques and for the products of these processes. The process of tie dye typically consists of folding, twisting, pleating or crumbling fabric or a garment and binding with string or rubber bands followed by applications of dyes. The manipulation of the fabric prior to application of dye are called resist as they practically or completely prevent the applied dye from coloring the fabric. More sophisticated tie dye involves additional steps including an initial application of dye prior to the resist. Multiple sequential dye and resist steps and the use of discharge. Unlike traditional resist dyeing techniques, tie dye is characterized by the use of bright saturated primary colors and bold patterns. These patterns includes the spiral, mandala and peace sign and the use of multiple bold colors have become cliched since the peak popularity of tie dye in the 1960s and 1970s. The vast majority of currently produced tie dye use these designs and many are mass produced for wholesale distribution. However, new interest in more sophisticated tie dye is emerging in the fashion industry characterized by the simple motifs, monochromatic color schemes and a focus on fashionable garments and fabrics other than cotton. A few artists continue to pursue tie dye as an art form rather than a commodity. Batik. Batik is a technique of manual wax resist dyeing applied to whole cloth or cloth made using this technique. Batik is made either by drawing dots and lines of the resist with a spotted tool called canting or by printing the resist with a copper stamp called cap. The applied wax resist dies and therefore allows the artisans to color selectively by soaking the cloth in one color, removing the wax with boiling water and repeating if multiple colors are desired. A tradition of making batik is found in various countries including Nigeria, China, India, Malaysia and Sri Lanka. The batik of Indonesia however is the most well known. We will now move on to the review of the various techniques of surface embellishments. But first let us understand the term fabric manipulation. Any technique that reshapes the surface of a material is known as fabric manipulation. There are different types of fabric manipulation techniques. They include embellishment through addition, embellishment through subtraction, beads, beading and construction techniques. In the gathering method, threads stitched through fabric are drawn together to reduce the fullness of the material to a required width. The stitches may be worked by hand 
but usually by the use of industrial machinery. In the shearing method, parallel rows of stitches are worked to reduce the fullness of a material to a required width. Pleating. Pleating is a method of folding material to control fullness. There are many variations of pleating, the main types being box, cartridge, fan, inverted and knife. Tucking. Tucking is a method of folding fabric to control fullness or simply to create decorative effects. Stitching may be by hand, machinery or by industrial machine. Example, pin tuck machine. Smoking. Smoking is a method of controlling fullness by use of gathers secured with rows of hand embroidery stitches. The threads are removed after the stitches are worked, releasing fullness below the last row of stitches. Variations include mock smoking, counter change, pattern shrink, and North American smoking. Quilting. In, in the quilting method, layers of materials are stitched together, usually with the use of padding to raise the surface in the material. These te techniques can be worked by hand, domestic and for some methods industrial machines. There are different kinds of quilting techniques. These are cord quilting, corded Italian quilting, stuffed trapento quilting, wadded English quilting, flat quilting and shadow quilting. The cord quilting technique. The cord quilting technique uses cord or similar padding to raise the surface of the fabric to create the design. Cord quilting is worked on one layer of fabric with the cord held in place underneath the material by stitching worked by hand or machine across the cord. In the corded or the Italian quilting, in this technique, two layers of fabrics are used with the underneath layer traditionally thin butter muslin. Two rows of parallel stitches are worked with a padding cord or yarn threaded through the channel from the back creating the raised design. The stuffed or trapunto technique. This technique quilting uses two layers of fabric with the underneath layer traditionally of thin butter muslin which padding inserted between the layers in areas. The padding is inserted from the back of the material into pockets created by stitching around the design. In the wadded English quilting, in this technique, three layers of materials in a sandwich construction are held in place by patterns of stitching forming the design. Wadding quilting is most common commercial method of quilting often uses in clothing and interior furnishings produced industrially by the meat. Variations can be done with button quilting with buttons securing the layers. Flat quilting. In this method, it is unpadded quilting using one or two layers of fabric worked with pattern of stitching. The shadow or ombre technique. In this technique, it uses strongly colored yarn, fabric or found objects underneath a transparent top layer of material using one of the quilting method. Embellishment through addition refers to all embroidery techniques that involve the addition of fabric, embroidered motifs or formed objects to be ground. This technique is often combined with quilting. Couching. Couching is a technique of using a working thread to source another thread or yarn to a material's surface. This is particularly found in metal thread embroidery. Traditional hand stitches techniques are numerous with mainly cultural variations. Some main types are white work, canvas work, counter thread work, black work and metal thread work. We will learn about each of these now. White work. White work is used to reference embroidery using white on white. The main types are a share embroidery, 
embroidery and glaze, Renaissance embroidery. Canvas work. Canvas work is embroidery worked on canvas. The main types are bag yellow, Florentine embroidery, Berlin wool work and cross stitch embroidery. Black work. Black work is monochrome embroidery usually worked on black. Metal thread work technique. In metal thread work technique uses precious metals, threads or alloys or synthetics, spangles or sequins to embellish materials. It is used in heraldic work, military and ceremonial embroidery, ethnic costumes and fashion. Many types of metal thread materials and techniques are used. There are different types of beading work. Tumba work or beading is commercially embroidery. Worked with a fabric is worked within a frame with the beads or sequins supplied on continuous thread. This method can be used for other embroidery techniques in addition to the application of beads and sequins and is still much in use within the fashion industry. The hand beading technique. In this technique uses a variety of methods to apply beads by hand individually or couching to the creating surface texture or pattern. Beads may also be worked over wired or thread constructions. Bead weaving. French beading. In this technique it is a method of hand stitch beading that imitates the fluid handle of tumba beading without the use of a frame. The reverse applique. The reverse applique technique thread stitched through fabric are drawn together to reduce the fullness of the material to a required width. The stitches may be worked by hand but usually by the use of gathering foot that is ruffle or industrial machinery. In the cut work method, a part of the fabric is cut away, stitches may, may then be worked in the remaining spaces by hand or machine. In the drawn thread method, in this method some threads from the fabric are withdrawn. The remaining threads are pulled together with stitches and decorated with further stitches. There are many variations, the main one being needle weaving. In the pulled work or the drawn fabric embroidery technique, stitches are worked on a loosely woven fabric and pulled tightly together to create the holes. The patchwork process, it joins fabrics together using stitches. This technique is often used com combination with quilting and applique. There are many variations but four main methods are there in this. In the applied patchwork. In this method, pieces of materials are joined together into a ground. And in the second one, in the piece work or the mosaic patch work or the inlay method, in this pieces of fabrics are joined together with stitches. The third one, the low cabin patch work. In this method, strips of materials are joined together in a pattern to form squares. These are then pieced together. The fourth one, in this crazy patchwork, in this method, irregular patches of materials are applied with decorative stitches to completely cover the base fabric. Lace. Lace is an intricate material made by various methods by hand or machine using interweave, knotting or looping process. The main types are needle made lace, bobbin lace and machine made lace. Needle made lace. In this, it is fine material constructed by hand using a needle and stitches. The main types are Renaissance lace, Reticella lace, and Richelieu lace. Bobbin lace. Bobbin lace is a hand method of constructing fine material using bobbin to weave threads between pins arranged on lace cushion. Related craft skills are knotting, macrame, tatting and crochet. The machine made lace. In this method, it began in early 18th century. Machine made lace are usually named after the machine that constructed them. Examples of this lace are Levis lace, Nottingham lace.
The final section explains the different types of equipment used in the industrial embroidery industry. There are many types of industrial embroidery equipments. New technology is constantly becoming available offering further opportunities for the embellishment of the fabric. Hand operated industrial equipment includes the Irish machine, Corley machine with many variations for applying two threads and three threads, cords, ribbon, beads, braid and sequins. The Barato scalloping machine for creating embroidered decorative edges and the threadless embroidery machine producing needle punched embroidery designs. An example of this is a Tananka. Shifi embroidery. It is produced using the extremely complex Shifi machines. They are able to produce narrow sections or fabric widths up to 15 yards. The number of needles per machine is usually about 1000 and these may all be programmed to be worked at the same time on the design. Shifli lace is created by working the designs on net which may then have the background fabric removed. The commercial embroidery industry is vast and is used for customization of workwear as well as for fashion and interior textiles. Computerized embroidery system. These are now extremely sophisticated and replicate many embroidery techniques previously only achievable through hand embroider or the use of hand operated industrial machinery. Boring tools, cord and sequence attachments are now available for most make of industrial CAD CAM embroidery multi thread machines including ZSK and the Tajima computerized embroidery machines. Machines range from modular machines that are become more popular such as a Maya machine with the capability of each head to work on separate designs. The Maya series of computerized machines allows the fabric to be embroidered and quilted simultaneously on continuous fabric rolls. This is being used extensively for bedding soft furnishings and is widely used in the textile and garment industry. Flatbed material laser cutting is popular within the textile industry. It offers the ability to precision cut a wide variety of materials such as silk, denim, leather and pseudo at speeds suitable for mass production and at bed width up to 2000 meters. This technique can be combined with other processes such as CAD CAM embroidery and print. The laser computerized engraving machine can engrave and precision cut in one process on a continuously moving bed to a maximum size of 1800 millimeter into 1800 millimeter with speeds up to 24 meter a second. This process can produce images text, logos and textures on finished items or raw materials including leather, wood, plastic, man-made and natural fabrics. It can also be used to change the color and the texture of some surfaces. You have come to the end of this unit. To summarize in this unit, you have learned about surface embellishments that are used on innovative fashion products and recognize their significance as value additions on textiles. The unit also gave you an insight into the scope of surface embellishments on fashion and apparel products. And finally, you were also given an overview of various surface embellishment techniques. Thank you.